Welcome back to Power BI Helpline. Let's talk about how to insert, delete, or update records into your database using Power Query Editor. If you are new here, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified. Let's check it out. I have created a table called Employees and inserted one record. I will connect to this database from my Power BI desktop and will show you how you can easily write back to your DB from Power Query Editor itself. Here I am writing a select statement so that I will get all the record from the employees table. Click on this transform data, it will take you to Power Query Editor. From here, I am going to create my feature, but before that I will go to Options and Settings to enable the native database query so that it will not prompt for user approval on each query. If required, you can rename this query to a relevant name. After that, I will click on Advanced Editor and I will convert this M code to a custom function same as we have done in our previous videos. I will replace my hard-coded SQL query with this parameter so that I can dynamically use them for each row of my tables. As my first operation, I am going to insert these additional records into my database using my custom function, and then we'll do some other operations. So I will copy this data, and in Power Query Editor, I will select Enter Data, and then press Control V. If required, you can directly connect that Excel sheet as well. Now click on Add Column, and then Custom Column. Column name, I will mention as Insert. Then I will start writing my Insert command. We will check if it works directly, or we need to apply some other technique. To get the seat number from each row, I will use text dot from function. This entire expression will just create a string, which will be used in my custom function. But there is a big problem with this approach, which we will see in a moment. As that you can see for each row, we got our SQL insert command. Now we will invoke our custom function in an additional column. All right, let's verify from our database if these rows are inserted or not. Those additional rows are inserted successfully. But let's understand what is the problem in this approach. If I will refresh my query, it will try to reinsert all these rows again and will throw primary key violation error. To solve this issue, we will add try catch method in our query with an additional command to get the message as status. To solve this issue, we will add try catch method in our query. Otherwise, if you don't have primary key, it will insert as many times as you refresh your query, which will duplicate the records in your table. I also added an additional command to get the status as successful if my query runs successfully without any error. Next, I am going to update the user seat number from old seat number to a new seat numbers. So I have copied this small update input. It is just for this demonstration. Otherwise, you can connect to such update tables directly so that even if you do schedule refresh from Power BI service with more rows in your input, it will be inserted automatically. All right, I will again add a column to form my update statement for each row same way as we did for our insert command. I will include the try catch method from the first step itself. With this update statement, I am rearranging the seat numbers for all the users such that user one to 10 will have seat numbers from one to 10 because currently they are allocated randomly and not in a sequential manner. Since we are creating the string with dynamic elements, you have to be very careful with the use of an operator or the quotation marks to form a complete string. Now I will invoke my custom function on this column and we'll see if it works. I can expand this to show my status column, which I mentioned inside the query. In our database, you can see the old seat numbers and the usernames Let's rerun the SQL query here to check if it was updated by Power Query. It is updated successfully in a sequential manner. Next operation is to create a table inside our database. We can invoke our custom function same way to create multiple tables in one go, and then insert records. But for this demo, I am creating just one table. I already have created the SQL statement to create table. Same thing I will paste here, and then run my query. In our database, Currently, we have the same employee table, and the new created table has not been created yet. So I will refresh my query from Power Query, and then check back into my database. After refreshing the tables folder, I can see my new table, Employees1 has been added here. The next database operation we are going to do is to delete a record from our employees table. For that, I can just edit my query to delete the user's record on seat number one. 
or I can invoke my custom function to run this operations on multiple rows in parallel. Please keep in mind that this is not the replacement of large-scale ETL activities, which you do from the dedicated tools like ADF, SSIS, or others. As that you can see, records for seat number one has been deleted. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more such interesting videos on Power BI.